Hello everyone, welcome to the Computer Network Lecture Series. In this particular session, we will discuss about the data communication, the fundamentals of the data communication. So what exactly is data communication? Data communication is actually the exchange of information between two devices which are able to send and receive the data. Now there are four fundamental characteristics which determine the effectiveness of data communication. This four are the first one is delivery, the second is accuracy, third is timeliness and four is jitter. So what is actually delivery? So here we have a source and we have a destination and we have another source. So delivery means that the source when it is sending some data, this green part is this one is the data. So when this particular source is sending the data, it must go to the proper destination. Okay. So it should not go to any other host which is not destined to receive the uh, particular message. So this is the first one. The second is accuracy. So here what does accuracy means? So if we have a source and destination, so source has this particular message. Okay. So this is let us assume this green part is the message. So when it is sent, now it gets changed before it is delivered to the destination. So the send data is not properly received, it gets corrupted. So this was sent and this was received. So this is it should not happen. Accuracy means whatever is sent must be received properly. Then second is timeliness. So what does timeliness means? So if we have a source and we have a destination, so when the source sends the data, it must be delivered in a particular time limit. Okay, like here, this data is delayed too much and by the time it reaches the destination it is of no use like the, the example of such is a uh, real time communication when we are communicating like uh, we, we are watching a cricket match okay so uh, or maybe we are having some conversation with someone and if the data is coming too late it becomes useless then we have the fourth one is the jitter so what does jitter means we have a source we have the destination source is sending few packets to the destination as we can see in this case the green one is sent first then the red one and the yellow one but at the destination yellow comes first then red and then green so they are not received according to the order so this is the sending order first this was sent the second this was the third was this one but the receiving order was the yellow was received first then uh, red and then green so they come out of order so this should not occur okay then there are five components of data communication okay so the first one is the message so we want to send some message the message it can be uh, day it can be a number it can be a text it can be audio video picture then we have a sender so there, there should be a sender who is sending the message then we have the receiver okay who receives the message then we have the transmission medium okay. so we need to send the data there should be some transmission medium it can be a wired medium it can be a wireless medium and then we need protocols for this communication to happen properly these protocols are nothing but they are a set of rules okay. so these are the rules which are also called uh, the set of rules are called as protocols so these are the five components the message sender receiver transmission medium and protocols now data representation there are various ways to represent the data the information the first one is the text okay this is the text message that uh, we can represent we want to send or receive the text message then the second is numbers so the data can be in a form of numbers then we can have images okay images can also be the data then uh, <coughs> we have the audio okay and then finally we have the videos so these are the various forms of data we can also have combination of this now next is the data flow okay so data flow can be either simplex so in simplex we have your host a and host b okay so data in this case only flows from host a to host b it does not flows from host b to host a so there is only one way communication okay where the data flows from host a to host b now the example of this is like host b can be the monitor a computer monitor which only actually receives the data from the cpu okay so this is uh, the host b cannot send any data to host a 
Next is the half duplex communication. So what happens in case of half duplex? We have host A. When it is sending the data, host B only receives the data. And when host B sends the data, host A can only receive the data. Both cannot send and receive simultaneously. So when one is sending, other will only receive. When other is sending, the first one can only receive. Next, we have full duplex communication, data flow. So in full duplex, both the host can send and receive at the same time. Next is uh, what are networks actually? So a network is the interconnection of set of devices which are capable of communication. So here we can have various examples like we have mobile phone, we have a uh, uh, this uh, laptop, okay, then smart machines, okay, uh, lap uh, this uh, printer, etc. The mouse. So they are capable of uh, sending and receiving the data. Now there are some criteria which must be satisfied by the network. The first one is the performance. Okay. So performance it depends on various factors. One of the factor is the throughput and the other is the delay. So throughput means large amount of it should uh, we, we want more throughput. Throughput means how much data it is able to send at a time. So more data more throughput less data less throughput. So throughput should be large and then delay. Delay is the amount of time it takes to uh, deliver the data to the destination. So delay should be as small as possible. Then the second is reliability. Now in case of reliability because there are various factors due to which the network may fail. So how much how frequently the network is failing and if it fails how much time it takes to recover that is the reliability. Then finally we have the security. So how much secure is our network is it possible for any uh, adversary any attacker to launch an attack on the network and get the data and or change the data anything so these are the three criteria which must be satisfied by the network now the physical structures so what are the various types of connection one of the connection is we have point to point connection as we can see these two hosts they are connected by a dedicated link and no other host is sharing this particular link. So this is called as a point-to-point -point, uh, connection. Then we have a multi-point connection. As we can see, we have a particular, we have maybe this is a server or any other machine and these are the various hosts which are connected. And this particular uh, connection is shared by various hosts. Okay. Now the physical topology. Now the first one is the mesh topology. So topology is a way in which we connect the various devices. So here we can see there are five hosts and each host is connected with every other host. So there is a dedicated link between each and every device. Now there are, are some advantages as well as disadvantages of this approach. Let us see the advantage. The advantage is this, uh, this type of communication is very efficient. So uh, because there is a dedicated link so as we can see if these two devices are communicating am amongst themselves so these two devices can also carry on their communication without interfering with other devices then this is a robust network robust means what suppose if one of the link fails still the net the, the other devices they will continue to share the data without affecting their own communication so if one of the link fails the entire topology the entire network is not affected then we have enhanced privacy so suppose if these two devices they are sharing the data they, because they have a dedicated link nobody else will know about this communication and of course it is having a simplified fault management if one of the link fails it is easier to actually find the fault and uh, actually uh, repair the fault then the disadvantage this advantage is that it is ha it has a complex installation as we can see this particular device it has been connected with all the other devices so uh, the the wiring becomes extremely complex and of course there is a space constraint we cannot have so many wire numbers. now here there are only five hosts imagine if there are ten hosts then every host we need be will, will uh, nine wires will come to that particular host okay if there are hundred ninety nine wire will come to that particular host so we have we will be running out of space and of course the hardware cost of the wire so many number of wires are required so this is the disadvantage of mesh topology the next is the bus topology in in this particular topology we have a single wire running from one end to the other end and all the hosts they are connected to that particular link okay, or particular wire 
Now this also has its own advantages and disadvantages. So the advantage is the ease of installation. So because there is a single wire, okay, so all the hosts they are directly connected to that particular wire. So second is the reduced cabling. If we compare this with other topologies, take the example of mesh. So here we require less number of cabling. And of course, because the less number of cabling is there, the cost becomes much less. Then disadvantage. The disadvantage is uh, it is difficult to reconnect and uh, get the fault isolation. Okay. So if you want to add some new devices, it becomes very much difficult. Okay. And if, if this particular link fails, then it would become impossible for getting the connection from this device to the other device. Then one more thing is uh, there is a signal degradation. So when signal travels large distances, the quality of signal becomes very much poor. Then if there is single cable, so if there is any fault, then uh, of course uh, that entire communication may get disrupted. Okay, And uh, of course there is a problem of noise in both the directions. So noise is actually unwanted electromagnetic interference. Next we have the ring topology. So in ring topology we have this wire connected in this particular way okay so all the hosts they are connected to this this particular ring because forming a circle now this also has its own advantage and disadvantage so of course advantage is uh, ease of installation and it, it is easy to reconfigure and of course there is a simple we have a simple fault isolation we can even find if there is any fault in this communication any of the link we can easily find it and this has an efficient resource utilization no, there is a dis disadvantage. Traffic only flows in one direction at a time. Okay? So if there is a single fault, the entire ring can get disrupted. This is another disadvantage. Next, we have the star topology. So this is the star topology. In this case, we have a hub and all the hosts, they are connected to the this centralized hub. So the advantage. So of course, this is cost effective. It requires less cabling as we can see and it is very easy to install and reconfigure and this is of course robust if this one this one of the link fails the other host they can continue okay and uh, we can have a fault isolation it is easy to actually locate the fault and because uh, this central hub is monitoring all the devices it is easy okay because there is a centralized monitoring thing then the disadvantage so disadvantage is actually suppose if this hub this hub fails then the entire network will become uh, inaccessible okay. and uh, of course here as compared to other topologies like bus topologies and ring topology this requires more number of cabling more wiring is required in this case next next the network types so this network types they can be distinguished based on various criteria the first is the size so network it, they, they can be small they can be medium they can be large they can also they are also based on the geographical coverage area so a network may be confined to a sm small room a small building or a campus or cities con continents or countries so it also depend depends on that then the ownership the networks may be privately owned or maybe they are publicly accessible so based on this we have lands that is local area networks so these are small scale networks which are confined to small locations such as home office campus then we have vans that is wide area network they cover vast geographical areas so that's all for this particular session thanks for watching